Good morning, Zodiac, and welcome. This is the Soul Family Read. This is for the 7th of December, 2021. Elephant in the room today, astrologically speaking, is once again, ta-da, Venus conjunct Pluto. That's my call. I mean, there's a lot to choose from, but that's a conjunction. Interestingly, you have Mars exactly sextile Pluto today. Now, Venus not as close as it's going to get, but it's in orb. And you've got, I know, I got to tell you, to me, this is a little bit of the energy of being a woman being held down and raped. I hate to use that, but that's the energy that comes to mind. There's a Pluto's power, you know, Venus is the feminine where we're vulnerable, where we're open, um, the divine feminine where the energy enters. And Mars is projective, masculine, you know. Mm -hmm. It's malefic, you know, it's, and it's in Scorpio, okay? Um, I, and I'm not demeaning Scorpio Mars people. That's not the point. But what Mars is doing here at this later degree of Scorpio, okay, I mean, yes, it could be very high vibing, uh, but typically it's, um, it's very, Mars is capable of taking a dramatic action. Um, it's self-preservation as well as the ego, you know, and the will and sexuality. Um, and I just see this as being a time uh, where we can be mercenary, you know, uh, in our masculine, feminine nature, in our relationships. Um, this could be going on. You also have Mercury square Neptune, so it's not a great time to make good decisions. Um, this stuff here is hitting me right in a kisser. Bunch of Sagittarius energy for me. And uh, Venus and Scorpio, luckily not in a late degree. Um, this is about values too, kind of being assaulted and maybe transformed because I think what we have to realize is whatever Pluto's doing, it's got to be for our own good, it represents the soul. And we'll give him a halo. Our, uh, this knight of swords at the bottom of the deck in this four card read, okay? Um, and I count that rather heavily. Um, that that king of swords to me the overall energy is just saying god damn it. It's time. It's time. It's time No more fucking around. It's time to speak up. It's time to stand out. It's time to stand up It's time to get up, you know um, It's not no nothing has to be done. No fist has to be thrown. No blood has to be spilled But there has to be some power exerted not force power. Okay power versus force it's time, and that's the divine masculine. That's what we're looking at here with this king of swords. There's nothing bad about divine masculine. There's nothing bad about divine feminine. It's just energy. In so far that it's been demeaned, it, I think, to control us all part of religions, part of our society. Not, none of, like uh, Terrence McKenna said it, find others, Terrence McKenna, the bard, you know, he said, Culture is not necessarily your friend. It's not necessarily our friend. What's going on in the greater uh, reality? What's going to be seen in these things? I mean, you can all feel, you can see it. It's mounting, it's coming, attention. It's going to be the same there as it is for us. You know, it just shows what's going on. For me, it's banging my third house. What's that communication? What am I doing? Communicating. What's that air? What's King of Swords? Air. What's King of Swords? Standing up. Being the, the you're really standing out, being mature, being wise, uh, needing to be. This is the overall energy here, guys, of us, of this reading. So it's a time when our values could feel like they're literally under assault. I want, I'm using the word rape deliberately because I think this could be a very powerful feeling. Because I think a lot of people are feeling this the last few days since this eclipse. Really hard feeling. Heron's making significant aspects. Oh my God, it's getting ready to go direct finally in Aries. Just punching you wherever you hurt. It's like if you broke a bone, it's like the movies where the bad guy sees that you're shot in your arm and grabs it, squeezes it to cause you pain. You know, that's Aries there, but it's getting ready to be relieved, you know? So there's a, there's a lot of tension, a lot of tension, a lot of tension building, you know? Yes, you know, and many of us, I think we're sitting here kind of in the, again, in this aftermath energy of these portals. I mean, my God, man, the timelines have been changed so much and the energy's been so strong. It's like all happening and all you hear about is crazy shit about masks and it's, it's like an insanity. Uh, 
it, when we consider the time we're in, what we're going through, everything is changing. The Aquarian age is beginning, and here we are, right here in the middle of it. And it is no accident. Rode ourselves into this script, and there is no doubt. And this is a theme, and this whole family constantly now still needing to heal being healed choosing to heal and you know the old saying with this is uh it, when they came back from battle they would sleep on a coffin to remind themselves of how close they had come to death and it was also a way of honoring fallen soldiers because inevitably they would uh, lose soldiers friends possibly you know there's that bond with warriors again going with the masculine energy but you know there's a special love and a special block i don't know it i've never served in the military uh that i think does exist i believe in past lives it was all i did in this life i came to be something different do something different but you know my heart always lies with the warriors i really don't think the warriors are the problem <clears throat> honestly um <clears throat> But here we are. This is our energy right now, in and around manifestation, spirituality, love, and relationships. Four swords. I'm feeling it. Um, I think like this guy just lay back and relax in it, and that's kind of where I'm at. You, oh, I just noticed too. I noticed it before. Look at the phoenix rising here. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yesterday's reading. Check it out. They're timeless readings, soul family. You know, it's just uh, put a date, but. You know, it's just the soul family reads are just kind of an adventure and energy, I hope. Wow, and look at what's the block. What's our block? No need to reverse this. The devil card. Yes, this is what's holding me back. This is what's holding us back. The devil card here. <sighs> There's so many feelings about this. I mean, I'm thinking about this so hard. Today here in Cancun, Mexico in the morning, right at dawn, but there goes an early worker. Hey, the Mexicans are the most hardest working people in the world, it gotta be, it's amazing, guys. I don't know why the cultures could be so different like that. Maybe because they didn't always have everything handed to them and you know, learn to appreciate things, but it's amazing. So here we are with the devil. Speaking of having everything handed to us, I think this is kind of wanting to take the easy way. Uh, wanting to, you know, um, satisfy the base needs. It's, this is just human. It's not really a devil. It's inside of all of us. You could say it's a 12th house. You'd say it's a Pisces lower octave energy of just being uh, addicted. Uh, many times this comes with being an empath. You know, I, I would go to say, man, I bet you most addicts uh, are empaths. And, and probably many of them don't even know it, right? Don't know it. And that right there could be really helpful. Because if you get somebody else who's an empath and knows how to shield and uh, stuff, you know you can get help with this. And maybe that helps in terms of addictions. But here takes it more to like a spiritual level, you know. Um... I really feel this so strong. With me, it's like my uh, progressed sun is approaching 29 degrees Aquarius right now, okay? And so this is all kind of interesting. Saturn and, and Jupiter banging through Aquarius, getting ready to blaze through Pisces, my seventh house, okay? And you talk about the devil here. Um, um, and so I think like when Jupiter goes through there, addictions are also associated with Jupiter too. So 2022 should be a banging year energetic. That should be a fuckload better than what we've been through in 2021. I think we're going to get the fuck up, and we're going to have to deal with this, right? Because we're going to be alive. And like, you know, like, okay, I don't know. Say you were, I've never really had a problem being a serious addict. I mean, a love addict. Yes, that kind of thing, you know. Uh, who knows what else? You know, tension addict or what, caffeine addict, you know, me, you know, that kind of thing. Um but, you know, when you're in this energy of really being down, it's like you sort of don't have to worry too much about this because you're not really healthy enough to do this, to do the things that are hard. All of this is is looking for shit outside of ourselves, inside of ourselves, in a toxic, unhealthy way. You know, like if we're out exercising, nothing unhealthy about that. You know, you know if we're making love, nothing unhealthy about that. But manipulation and control and fear and all of this stuff that can go in and you know, not wanting to let go and just wanting to dwell in the lower pleasures, you know. I think a lot, too, is fear. 
Um, for me, it's, I'll tell you, the deepest thing, it's just very hard for me to really trust that everything is perfect, you know, um, to really kind of give up my will and say, okay, now I get it. Anything that happens, absolutely meant to be. And I have to stay grounded and centered and it's not so easy. You know, that's the ego. It's like many things that happen from my point of view, no, they are not okay. And so there's this struggle right here. Um, and I see us still in metamorphosis with this four swords. And almost like this is being our blocking is something that we're looking forward to. No sooner than we rise up here, what do we have to deal with this? And I mean, you know, we could literally say, get thee back devil that kind of energy uh, or we could say come on we got things to do but I'll show you I'll show you what we're going to do right you can have your play later when the bedroom door closes right now we got work to do here whatever that work is <laughs> yeah don't go overboard don't throw the ba baby out with the bath water here okay now this is advice from spirit this is for uh, us in terms of uh, relationships love spirituality manifestation and we're getting the king of wands here not get that in focus quite but you surely do get the feel of it uh, notice the two pillars of fire here go with the wand his posture relative to the other kings and see here even his face very stern with the what is coming behind this bright light you know from the sun so, you know, and this is advice from spirit. So I cannot see this anything else. And look at the contrast. One thing, you know, I'm thinking the, the Pluto uh, con, uh, sextile Mars is this energy here. It's uh, Pluto and Scorpio and eighth house energy. But it's saying like this is our advice. Transmute this energy of the devil into mastery and out and standing out you know being uh, brave is the king of wands being bold is the king of wands um you know um the king of wands you you would be able to be the fool you know if someone said like don't do that that's crazy and you thought like nope this is for me you know you're gonna do it remember guys the phoenix it's rising what the hell is this here this this is the phoenix risen it's saying it's coming second day in a row same kind of message same very different cards same kind of message very powerful here look at the colors look how bright this is saying like you're you're not going to have to play here remember the overall energy too though we have two kings already all right no overall energy i kind of take that as advice and the advice card in my opinion is the most important card in this little reading outcome god damn i'll take the queen of pentacles all day and all night i didn't sound right when it came out <laughs> uh within myself this is fantastic energy here uh we were talking about starting out i was about the uh divine uh masculine i think is emphasized here but it's important to remember and here boy if that's not divine uh, masculine energy and you know projective energy uh, as opposed to receptive uh, 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 mediums and psychics, as opposed to Reiki healers, you know, projection healers. And, and now, but in the end, the outcome is that we're this balanced queen, uh, capable, knowing our value, um, queen and the king of pentacles both. They run the best kingdom. <laughs> kingdom is ourselves. So. This is also someone we really are taking care of ourselves. We're balanced. We're healed. You know, Queen of Pentacles and have no uh, time for this devil energy. And now, what do you get with the King and Queen of Pentacles? Um, but now, in terms of self, that's spiritually perfect balance. You know, the grounded earth energy, Gaian energy of this Queen of Pentacles with Zeus, the King of the Gods, Jupiter, all this fire. That's a nice balance right there. Now, I'm going to tell you, from love and relationship standpoint, if you have any interest, the, there you go. This kind of energy here is ultimately, if you want it, it's all about intention. This would create a balanced relationship of two mature, stable people. And it'd be amazing. 
Okay, that's down the road a bit, guys, but thank you.